Hi guys, today I've got a masterclass tutorial all about how to understand colour and create colour grading effects in Photoshop. And I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. Now in this tutorial guys is my masterclass tutorial all about how to understand colour and create colour grading effects in Photoshop. So if you'd like to have a look at any of the pre-selected photos, then go ahead to the link in the description. Understanding colour is probably one of the biggest hurdles photographers face. Knowing how to use colour effectively to create mood and atmosphere is difficult. Even picking colours that work well together, most people struggle with. So that's why I decided to make this tutorial, to help you guys firstly understand colour, but also creating pleasing colour grading techniques in Photoshop. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to master color grading and also understand how colors work so you can either alter the scene or create mood and atmosphere in your photos. I'm going to be breaking these videos down into five separate parts and you'll be able to skip to the part that will help you most by using the timestamps that I've got just here. First part I'm going to be talking about is color theory. And then I'm going to move on to why color is important in photography. Next, I'm going to be talking about saturation and values and how shades and tones work in photos. And then I'm going to move on to colour harmonies and how to create colour harmonies in your photos. And lastly, I'm going to show how I've put all of this into practice in Photoshop and how you can use certain tools to create colour grading effects in Photoshop. So without further ado, guys, let's get started. So first, colour theory. Colour theory is the understanding of how colours are made. All colours in the visible spectrum are a combination of three basic colours, red, green and blue. All other colours are a combination or a mixture of these colours combined. So let's take yellow for example. Yellow is a mixture of 50% green and 50% red. So changing the percentage values of these primary colors can create millions of colors in the color spectrum. And that's the basics of how colors are created. If you'd like to learn more about color theory, I'm going to be making a future tutorial that goes a lot more in depth of the understanding of color theory. Also, I'm gonna be making a tutorial about how different color modes can be used in Photoshop. So stay tuned for those videos. Why are colours so important in photography? Colours, when used correctly, can add mood and atmosphere to your photos. They can also guide the viewer's eyes to what's most important in the photo. Take this photo for example. The muted tones in the background draw your eyes to the bright orange shirt of the model. It brings her to the forefront of your attention. However, when used incorrectly, like in this photo of Central Park, it can make the viewer feel lost, nauseous, or even irritated. Colours are really important when you want the viewer to be guided through the photo. If all of the colours are shouting at the viewer, there is nowhere for your eyes to rest. Colours can make or break your photo, and it's really important to get the colours just right for your image. This is even more important on photo composites. Colours are one of the biggest giveaways that your photo is fake. To test this, just take out your latest work and convert it to grayscale. Notice how it immediately looks a lot more photorealistic. Getting colours right is just hard. So when I was first introduced into photography, I thought just adding colours to your photo was the way to go. Boosting saturation and brightening the colours. But when I used these raw colours, I noticed that results just came out ugly. But why is this? Saturation and value. That's why. So what is the importance of saturation and value? Saturation and value are one of the biggest culprits when it comes to ugly colour work in your photos. Again, to use this photo of Central Park as an example, it has an overly saturated HDR look to it. And in my opinion, this ruins the photo. So what is saturation and value? 
Saturation is the intensity or purity of the colour, and value refers to the brightness or darkness of that colour. Saturation and value in combination with each other can create all types of shades and tones that you see. So for example, on the left is 100% red and it's really difficult to look at. But if you tone down the saturation to 20%, it becomes almost pink. Again, I haven't changed the color, just the saturation. And it can give you completely different results. So let's try this again, but with value. On the left hand side is 100% red. But if you tone down the value to 20%, it almost becomes a brown color. Again, I haven't changed the color, just the value this time. So changing the saturation and value of the colour can come up with very different results and tweaking these two values can come up with a whole spectrum of shades just starting from one raw colour. So how do you use saturation and value in practice? Let's look at this photo for example. At the moment there is too much saturation in this photo but simply turning down the saturation and decreasing the value of the colours can change the whole dynamic of the photo. It can turn a bad photo into a great one. Now that's not saying that saturated colors are all bad, but you have to use saturated colors in combination with other shades and tones to create a great photo. You can even use bright saturated colors to draw the viewer's attention to certain parts of the photo. Take this photo for example. Using these desaturated tones of the water and sky can bring emphasis to the buildings on the left and right hand side. This is deliberate, drawing the viewer to what's most important in the photo. This is also can be seen in films and movies. Take Star Wars for example. Whenever there's a fight scene, the colours in the surrounding background and even sometimes the actors have been on purposely desaturated to draw the viewer's attention to the lightsaber. The contrast is obvious when you view it scene by scene and out of context. Brightness and saturation can also affect your mood. Take the movie Up for example. The movie starts off with the colours being very vibrant. There's lots of oranges and pinks, vibrant grass and bright colours. This signifies happiness and a joyful moment in their lives. But when it later turns to sadness, the bright colours and saturating changes into desaturated tones, a lot of greys and a lot of browns, almost no bright colours to be seen. This is obvious when you view it out of context and side by side to each other, but when watching the movie it can sometimes be missed. So to summarise what I've already spoken and to con conclude saturation and values, don't overuse it. Don't overuse saturation and colours and high values all throughout your scene. It will always come out horrible. Use saturation and value to guide the viewer and tell a story with your photos. You can use saturation and value to change the mood. Use vibrant colours and photos to add joy and happiness and use desaturated colours when you want to convey sadness or depression. And of course, you can use saturated colours to draw the viewer's attention to an object or person within the photo. So that's the basics of colour theory, why colours are important, and saturation and values. Next, I'm going to be talking about colour harmonies. So what are colour harmonies? Colour harmonies are the fact that some colours look better together than other colours also known as colour schemes or complementary colours. So today I'm going to be talking about the six most popular and common colour harmonies that just work well and that you can start using them in your photography right away. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is monochromatic and probably the easiest one to start off with because it only involves one colour in the entire image. Monochromatic images work best when there's just a single subject because it forces the viewer to focus on the small details of the image. You can use the changes in saturation and value to convey detail and changes in light. Monochromatic effect also can add depth and atmosphere to your photos. The most common form of monochromatic images are black and white photos, but there are many different examples of monochromatic photography out there. So here are a few examples. So my first example is this lovely photo of a desert. 
as you can see from the very foreground of the photo all the way to the background of the sunset it is only containing this beautiful color orange which has a mystical kind of depth to it that you wouldn't get if this was a full color photo the next example is this lovely photo of some mountains again with the beautiful starry night sky in the background again utilizing saturation and value to create depth and atmosphere and my last example is some lovely photo of a plant again using value and saturation to add depth and an interesting mood to this photo so next is analogous Analogous colour schemes refer to colours that sit adjacent to each other on the colour wheel. This colour scheme can have up to three different colours and is popular because it's easy on the eye. Analogous colour schemes have been popular for ages as most natural landscape refer to this style of colour grading. This style of colour grading can also create a peaceful and a comfortable mood, again depending on the choice of colours. So here are a few examples. So my first example is this lovely photo of a forest. And as you can see, the analogous color schemes is represented using the oranges and greens that you can see on the bark and on the forest floor. My second example is this amazing photo of some mountains. And you would initially think this would be monochromatic until you notice the very dark green muted tones that you can see on the far left hand side. And lastly is a great example of an analogous colour scheme. This beautiful photo of an island that you can see the colours being represented in this beautiful dark blue, which then change into this gorgeous green that you can see on the island. This is a great example of an analogous colour scheme. Next is triatic. Triatic colour schemes refer to colours that are equally distant from each other on the colour wheel. This is probably one of the hardest to pull off as each colour is very distant from each other. A triatic colour scheme doesn't just refer to primary colours either, as long as the colours are equally distant from each other on the colour wheel. You will often find a triatic colour scheme in surreal style photography, as this particular type of scheme is quite playful and dynamic. So here are a few examples. So my first example is this great photo of a girl. On the left hand side you've got the red, on the right you've got the blue and then you've got the yellows in the skin tones and this is a great example of what you would call a primary triatic colour scheme as it has all three of the primary colours. My next example is this lovely photo of a girl surrounded by flowers. You've got the purple with the green and then the skin tones where bringing out the orange. And then lastly you've got this great urban photo of a alleyway and again you've got the triatic colour scheme with the teal ground you've got the pink sign in the far distance but then you've also got the orange building on the left hand side next is complementary colours complementary colour schemes are probably one of the most popular style of colour grading in photography a complementary colour scheme refers to colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel and is very popular for portrait style photography. But you must make sure the colours are not balanced, meaning that there is one main colour and the complementary colour plays just a small part in the image. Never use a 50-50 split, more like a 70-30 split works best. Complementary colour schemes are also very popular in landscape style photography, as these colours are often found a lot in nature. This style of colour grading also looks appealing to the eye and works with most styles of photography. So here are a few examples. So my first example is a photo of the Shard in London. And this is a great example of a natural complementary colour scheme. This is where this sunset has created this beautiful purple colour, but also as a complementary colour, this yellow colour comes into it, especially in the lights in London as well. My next example is a photo of a MacBook. And as you can see, we've got the teal lights shining off of the reflection of the screen, but then we've got the yellow color coming in through the keyboard and in the background. And then lastly, we've got this great photo of an aerial shot of a beach. And this is probably one of the few exceptions of the 50-50 rule, where you've got this lovely kind of 
orange color in the sand, but then you've got the beautiful blue kind of color separated by the shoreline, which is white. Next is split complementary. So let's talk a little bit about split complementary color schemes. Split complementary color schemes are very similar to the one we just talked about using opposite colors. But instead, you take one end of the color wheel and you split it into two colors, creating this split style complementary color scheme. This style of color grading allows you to be more creative as you're not just locked down to just two colors. This particular style of color grading also allows you to use up to three colors, which is often makes your photography feel more lively and joyful. Again, depending on your choice of colors. So here are a few examples. So my first example is a great photo of a Porsche on a beach. And due to the color of the Porsche being similar, but not the same to the sand in the foreground, this allows this split toning effect to occur. Again, with the blue overcast sky above. The next photo is a great portrait photo of a girl. And again, the use of split toning between the using the red lips as an example of the split toning effect. And lastly, a great street portrait of a guy standing at a corner. And again, the use of split toning with the red bricks versus the tan color that you can see on the sidewalk. And again, with the complementary color of teal represented on the building. These are great examples of some split complementary color schemes. You can even use color harmonies in your everyday life. And for instance, I'm using it in the back of my YouTube tutorials. So for instance, I've got the blue at the top here and then it fades down into this lovely purple. And again, I've got this nice kind of ambient light from this right side here shining down onto me. And this is creating a split complementary color effect. And again, I can go down and dial in to the exact colors that I want. And again, I also obviously color grade my uh, YouTube videos as well. So it shows you that you don't just have to use it for traditional photography, you can use it for film and video as well. And you'll notice now it happens in everywhere of your everyday life. And you'll notice a lot of YouTubers use this effect to create a nice appealing video for you guys to look at. And last but not least is double complementary. So let's talk a little bit about double complementary color schemes. Again, very similar to the complementary color scheme, but this time it's doubled, meaning you have a choice of four colors instead of just two, which adds a lot more creative freedom in your photography. It really doesn't matter where these colors fall on the color wheel, as long as you have two pairs of opposite colors, such as green and red and yellow and blue. This particular style of color grading works best when the foreground and background are separate. So for example, a model in the foreground and a beautiful mountains or city in the background. Again, very similar to the complementary style color grading, never try and split these colors 50-50. Always try and have a main color with the complementary colors just playing a small part in the image. So in this case, no more than 25%. This particular style of color grading is difficult to pull off, but if done correctly, can look pleasing to the eye. So here are a few examples. So my first example is this amazing photo of some cliffs in Rio de Janeiro. As you can see, the green and the blue complement each other really well with the dark forest beneath and then the rising cliffs. And then you've got the complementary colors in the background where you can see the sea meets the beach. And it's this lovely yellow color fading into a very muted blue. Again, this photo is very similar. You've got the deep kind of blue color fading into this lovely gradient of orange of the sunset. But then you've got the pink in the very top hand corner. Again, this is a great example of a double complementary color grading. And then lastly is probably the best example that I've found. As you can see in the background, you've got a gradient from the very top. You can see the red and it fades down into a very muted green. It's very subtle, but it is there. And then again, you can see we've got the double complementary color effect with the model. Again, this is a great example of a double complementary color grading. So now we understand why color is important. 
the importance of using saturation and values, and then how color harmonies work. I'm now gonna show you how you can put all of that into practice and use particular effects in Photoshop. Now, if you'd like to download any of the photos that I'm gonna be using in this tutorial, then go ahead to the link in the description. And today I'm going to be using these five photos and each photo I'm gonna show you a particular tool in Photoshop. So the first tool I'm gonna to show you is the gradient map adjustment layer. Now this particular effect or particular tool is great for creating a monochromatic effect. So this is where you use a single color. So what we're gonna do is we've chosen this photo here, which is uh, photo one. We're gonna go down to our adjustment layers icon and we're gonna to go to the penultimate to the bottom, which is this there, which is called gradient map. Now gradient map is a way of creating a gradient from the brightest to the darkest pixels. And again, this is great for creating a monochromatic effect in Photoshop. So what we're gonna do is just turn it off for the moment. And what we want to do then is double click. And what it will do is it will bring up this dialog box. Once you bring up the dialog box, this is where you want to create the effect. So you want to click on that and it will bring up our gradient editor dialog box, which is the one that we're after. And this is where we can create a custom gradient. And we want to choose three particular colors. So the color on the left-hand side is our darkest color and the color on the right-hand side is our brightest color. But the color we also want to add is the color in the middle. So we want to put a location of 50 and this will be our highly saturated color. So on the left hand side, we want to find a particular color in this uh, photo that is dark. So we want to find the darkest point in the shadows, which I'll probably say is somewhere around here. And as you can see, the color value has appeared in the thumbnail. And then in the middle, uh, we want to select a highly saturated color. So we'll probably select somewhere in the sand around here. And then with our lightest color, we probably want to select somewhere around here. So you'll end up with a kind of saturation value similar to this. Now, if you find, I think this particular right hand one is a bit too blue. So what we can do is double click and we can just change the value back into kind of where the oranges fall. So we could press OK. And then all we will need to do is press OK on this and you'll just need to turn the layer back on again. And as you can see, it's created this effect. And we can now start tweaking where the gradient thumbnails are appearing. So as you can see, it's a bit too bright. So all we will need to do is probably just increase the um, saturation of this particular area. And then what we'll probably do is change it here as well, increase the saturation slightly. And we can also move these around as well. So if we move this all the way over to the right hand side, as you can see, this effect is really starting to work. Uh, and what I'll probably do is add a little bit more of a darkness to the shadows. Lovely, and I am really happy with this effect. And that is how you use the gradient map tool to create a monochromatic effect in Photoshop. So the next tool I'm going to show you is the color balance adjustment layer. And this particular tool is great if you want to change the mood and atmosphere of a photo. So today I'm gonna to be using this photo and this will be photo two in the link in the description. And what I want to do today is to create more of a summer theme. And we can do this by using the color balance layer and changing the temperature of the photo. So what we want to do is go down to our adjustment layers icon and we want to go to color balance. Now this is very similar if you, for instance, ever use the uh, hue and saturation tool or maybe if you've used the selective color tool where it's broken down into a bunch of different color bands. But this time the colors are opposite each other. So for instance, we've got cyan, magenta and yellow and they are opposite red, green and blue. So that's how you can change the colors and again create a complementary color effect. So today what I want to do is to create more of a warm tone. So what we want to do is have a look at our color spectrum and work out where the warm tones are. And they're predominantly found yellows, reds, and kind of those, that area of the color spectrum. So what we want to do is just increase those in this particular photo. Now, a lot of the photos or a lot of the colors in this particular photo are found in the midtones. So what we want to do is go to our tone section here and we want to select the midtones. And in fact, the midtones are the default for color balance. And what we want to do now is just increase the amount of yellow and probably increase the amount of red. 
And we can also do this in the highlights as well, as I find that's predominantly found in the top right hand corner. And what we could do is probably increase the amount of red and ever so slightly increase the amount of yellow. And as you can see, we're now changing the dynamic of the photo and it's changed the mood and atmosphere. So what we can do is we turn that off. As you can see, it's very blue. And then if we turn it back on again, it's a lot more of a summer theme to it. And this is a great way, again, if you want to change the mood of the photo, to change it to more of a joyful summer theme than if you were, for instance, a cooler theme using blues or maybe purples. And there we go, guys. So that is how you can use the color balance tool to create a nice moody atmosphere in your photos. So the next tool I'm going to show you is the hue and saturation tool. And this is an incredibly powerful tool in Photoshop, especially if you want to change the colors in the photo. And it's a really, really diverse way of changing colors. So what we're gonna do is open photo three, which is this photo here. And this time we're going to be using the hue and saturation tool. So we're gonna go down to our adjustment layers and we're gonna go up to hue and saturation. Now hue and saturation, again, this is very similar to what we were talking about previously with the saturation and values. This allows us to change those in our photos. But instead of just having saturation and lightness, we've also got hue as well. So it allows us to change the color as well as the saturation and value, which is also called lightness in this particular effect. So what we can do is in this particular photo, I want to change it to more of a complementary color theme instead of a split complementary. So what I want to do is to remove all of the heavy reds and oranges and convert them into yellow. And we can do this really easily just using the hue and saturation tool. So what we want to do is to work out the areas that we want to have affected. So that's predominantly the reds and oranges. So what you want to do is go to our master selection. You can see right at the top here, we want to drop it down to the color that we want to change, which is red. Now, once we've changed that, again, we can change the luminosity, like so. We can also change the lightness, but I think because we want to change it from a split complementary into a complementary color scheme, we're gonna change the hue first and then adapt the saturation and values afterwards. So with our hues, what we're going to do is I'm gonna move it to the right-hand side, and that should hopefully remove all of the reds and oranges. And as you can see, it has worked lovely. And again, you can move it around until you are completely happy with the result. But again, as I was saying, it's an incredibly powerful tool. So if you take it all the way, as you can see, you can change it to green and you should be able to change it to blue as well. So it's a really, really, really strong and powerful way of changing colors. So I think I'm probably gonna go for a nice bright yellow, something like so. And then what I'm probably going to do is just increase the saturation of the yellows ever so slightly, like so. So as you can see, it's changed the entire photo. But again, we can see the blues are a little bit affected. So if you want to increase the saturation, all you'll need to do is just go to our master selection, drop down to blues, and then you'll just simply just need to increase the saturation there like so. And again, you can move it around. It might be as well in cyans. So as you can see, we can move it around and create more of a deeper blue. Again, we can increase the saturation like so. So if we do the before and after, wow, what a massive change to this photo, changing it from a split complementary into a complementary color theme. And there we go. So that's how you can use the hue and saturation to change the color themes in your photos. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use the selective color layer. So the selective color layer is a great way if you want to change the colors ever so slightly and be a little bit more precise in how you change them. So today I'm gonna to be working on this, which is called photo four. And what I want to do is just to remove all of the yellows uh, and convert them into red. So again, changing this from a split complementary into just a simple complementary color scheme. So what we want to do is go to our adjustment layers icon and we want to go to selective color. Now again, this is very, very similar to the hue and saturation, but you can be a lot more precise and you can really dial in the right amount of color for your photos. And this is great if you've ever worked with portrait style photos, uh, especially if you want to try and fix the skin tones. So what we want to do today is we just want to remove most of the yellow and probably try and boost up the red a little bit. 
So what you want to do is go to where you can see colors and we want to select the yellow first. And what you want to do is probably decrease the amount of cyan in them and that should hopefully bring out the red. So what we can do is go to our red section, go to the cyan section and just bring it down. And then we'll probably go to our yellow section and probably bring that up as well. Lovely. And then what we can probably do is also go into the cyan section and just reduce that as well. Lovely. Now, as you can see, it is slightly affected it. So if you do the before and after, it's made it a little bit more of an orange color. But I think the way that's best going to be changing this is if we probably increase the amount of magenta in it. And as you can see, that's worked. So what we want to do now is probably just increase the red. And we can increase the red simply just by going to our cyans and dropping the amount of cyans, as you can see, in the reds. That's because red obviously is the opposite of cyan. So if you want to decrease the amount of cyan, you can obviously increase the amount of red. Or for instance, if you want to decrease the amount of red, you can always increase the amount of cyan. So they're always going to be opposites on the color spectrum. So there we go. So if we do the before and after, that's how you can use the selective color layer to change ever so slightly the colors in your photos. Next, I'm going to show you probably the most powerful tool in Photoshop and that is the camera raw filter. So the camera raw filter is probably the most powerful way of changing colors in Photoshop. Now, if you've ever used Lightroom before, you might notice that the layout is very similar as I think they're probably found in the same particular format, but in Camera Raw Filter, you also have the power of Photoshop as well. So after you've finished all of the changes in your Camera Raw, you can then change it back into Photoshop. And again, it gives you a lot more creative control than just for instance, either Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC. So what we're gonna do is open up the very last photo in our choice, which is photo five. And today I want to change the yellows and the blues or probably teals in this particular case to more of a kind of binary yellow and blue. So again, just changing it from a split complementary into a complementary color theme. And we're gonna be using the camera raw filter. So the first, what we want to do is just duplicate the background layer. So we have a photo or have a layer to go back to uh, just in case we do make any mistakes. So what we want to do is click on our background and press command J. And I'm just going to rename this particular layer camera raw, just so we don't get lost when, if we do create a lot of layers afterwards. And then after we've done that, we want to convert it into a smart object. So we can go back and change the camera raw filter afterwards. And this will turn it from a destructive layer, so it means we can't change it, to a non-destructive layer, which means we can adapt it after the fact. So what we're gonna do is right click on that layer and convert to smart object. So once we've done that, we can now open the camera raw filter. So we're gonna go to Cert filter. We're gonna go to camera raw filter, which is found two from the top. And as you can see, it brings up a completely new box. Now, again, like I was saying, if you've ever used Lightroom Classic, you might notice that the layout is very similar. So there's are three particular icons that we want to pay attention to in this particular tutorial. So we've got the main one, which is basic. We've got our hue and saturation changes, but we've also got our split toning. And I'm gonna to be talking about each one of them now. So firstly, we're gonna talk about the basics. Now, predominantly, this is where you'd find most of the changes for exposure. So not necessarily color grading, but again, changing the brightness and luminosity of colors can be found in the exposure section. So as you can see, we can change the exposure, we can change the texture. So for instance, in this particular photo, you can obviously increase this exposure, which again, will actually change how the colors look in the photo. So you might not necessarily changing the luminosity of them because you're changing the contrast, it will seem like the colors are brighter. So if we increase the contrast a little bit, and then we'll probably increase the clarity and dehaze ever so slightly. Now again, at the top here, you've got temperature and tint. Now again, like I was saying with color balance, you can change the temperature, which will dramatically change how the, you feel about the photo. So again, if you add more warmer tones to it, it will feel more joyful and uh, it, will, it will feel a bit more pleasing to the eye. But if you add more cooler tones to it, it might add a, a cooler feel, like a wintry feel to the photo. So again, it all depends on what type of photo that you're working with. So I think I'm gonna leave that just like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our major tool, which is gonna be the hue saturation or HSL adjustment layer. 
Now, if we click on that icon just here, now HSL stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. And again, this goes back to the saturation and value section of this tutorial and how important it is when it comes to creating color grading effects in Photoshop. So as you can see, it's broken down into a bunch of different color bands. But as you can see, we can change the hue, saturation, and lightness all independently. So if we go into our hue first, this will allow us to change the type of color. And again, it's broken down into a bunch of color bands and we can change those color bands independently. So as you can see, I've zoomed in, just gonna zoom into the shirt here. This is a very orange shirt. If we want to change it to more of a yellow color, what we can do is go to our orange section and we can just move it over to the right slightly. And as you can see, it has changed it from an orange into a yellow. And again, we can do this with the yellows. We can move it around until you are happy with the result. And again, I quite like the teal, but if I wanted to convert it into a more of a blue color, so we're talking about the jeans now, we can just simply move this particular one all the way to the right. And as you can see, if we do the before and after, it's converted it into more of a traditional blue jean color. Now, if we zoom out, as you can see, we've changed the effect, but I would still say I'd like the yellow to be a bit brighter. So we, what we can do is we can change the saturation and lightness. So we can go to our saturation section and we could just increase the saturation slightly. And then again, with our luminance, we can also just increase the luminance like so. And we could probably do that with the oranges as well. So let's change the saturation of the oranges as well. And as you can see, it's brought it up. And this is a way of really dialing the right amount of colors for your photo. And this is why I was saying it's probably the most powerful tool in Photoshop for color grading, because you've just got such a diverse amount of uh, settings that you can do to really dial it down to the right color grading for your, for your particular photo. And then again, with this color grading effect, we can also even add a split toning. So again, you can take normal colors, uh, in your photos and you can actually split them. So you can add shadows, you can have a slight tint to them and you can have highlights and have a slight tint to them as well. And we can do that by going into our split toning um, icon. So in our split toning icon, as you can see, it's broken into highlights and shadows and you can actually add colors to the highlights and shadows independently from each other. Hence the name split toning. So with our saturation, what we could do is increase the saturation. And in the highlights, I'm gonna add more of a warm color to it. And then in the shadows, I'm gonna add a cooler theme as predominantly the background is a lot darker than the foreground. So what we can do is increase that. And I'm probably going to go for more of a slight orange like so. And again, with our saturation in our values on the shadows, we can probably change that to, let's go for something dark and then we'll probably increase the blues something like so and again you can change the balance so this is where the shadows and highlights are found so for instance if you brightened it there'll be less shadows and more highlights and if you darkened it there'd be more shadows and less highlights so for instance if i drag this down as you can see more of the colors are affecting in the shadows if i move it up more of the highlights are taking into consideration so if we probably keep that in the center like so. So there we go guys, so if we do the before and after, as you can see, we've dramatically changed this colors in this photo by using the camera raw filter. And all you'll need to do is to confirm it and go back into Photoshop, you just need to press okay. And because we've converted it into a smart object, we can go back into the camera raw using the smart filters. And there we go guys. So that is how you can use the camera raw filter to change colors and color grading in Photoshop. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that is my masterclass tutorial on how to understand color, understand why color is so important in your photos, hue and value, and how to uh, use it effectively in your photos, how color harmonies work and how to maybe split and use split toning and also how to put all of that into practice and use particular tools in Photoshop to get the results that you are after. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. I've just hit 1000 subscribers last Wednesday. So thank you to everybody that has subscribed so far. Also guys, if you want to have a look at my Etsy account, I've got a bunch of actions. I've got Photoshop actions, I've got Lightroom presets to help you along your color grading adventure. 
But until next time, guys, keep creating.